Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Wethersfield Library Board meeting for August 21st, 2021. It's seven o'clock in Wethersfield, Connecticut. And um, we'll kick things off with public comment. Brooke, I don't see anyone in on hold here or waiting. You have anything in the mailbag? We do not. I have not received anything in snail mail or through email. All right. Moving on, um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Anyone have anything? Nope. No? Good. All right. So uh, let's move to the approval of the minutes. Does everyone have a copy of the unapproved minutes that were sent in the packet? Um, can I get a motion? We'll discuss, we'll take the motion first and then we'll have our discussion. A uh, motion to approve the minutes from the July 27th meeting. I can make that motion. Thanks, Peter. Do I have a second? Second. Thanks, Lori. Uh, any additions or changes? Uh, any, any, any comment, discussion, changes? Anyone see anything? Peter, good job. You are- Really? They're, huh. they're, they're comprehensive. For <laughs> I didn't think so. I, they, I got very concerned that it wasn't comprehensive enough. I'm like, oh, oh this is a lot. It's, it's hard. I hate taking it because I like to listen rather than write. But I didn't <laughs> Peter, thanks for helping me out. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyone have anything? All right, I know we have a couple people who weren't here, but we'll go all around the horn um, and let everyone vote. Amanda, uh, for the minutes. Yes. They, Yes, Lori. Aye. Um, Hannah. Abstain. Abstain. Terry. Abstain. Uh, Diane. Um, should I abstain? I think you need to abstain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would abstain. If you're absent. Yeah. Kristen. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> is it star six? Is it, why don't you give us a thumbs down if you're abstaining? I'm assuming you're abstaining, right? Yes, okay. You can't, we'll, can you we'll hear me now? That. Yes, yep, you're on. Oh. And okay. Peter, you are? Uh, yes, I'm a yes. Okay, and I'm a yes. Oh, and here comes Michelle. Can we have Michelle vote on this if she wasn't here for the motion? Yes, I think we can. Okay. We'll just wait for Michelle to come in. Hi, Michelle. We're just voting on the, the uh, minutes from the last meeting. I'll, I'll just ask if, if you had, did you have any comments or changes to the minutes from the last meeting? We've already made the motion, seconded oh, yeah. and Sorry, okay. I'm late. Let's find the way. <laughs> Are you good with it? We're, we're just voting. Are you a yes on the minutes? Yes. Okay. And I'm a yes too. Um, just as for the good of the group, um, when we're in person, we don't have to do that whole ask everybody, but there's something about the Zoom where we're supposed to actually ask everyone to acknowledge. One day that will go away again. So, okay. Hey, soon. Yes. All right. Um, okay, next we have um, the nomination and election of officers. Um, each year we um, have to vote on our, uh, our executive board. Um, again, for, for those who are new, we have um, our executive is made up of a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary. Um, so I will open the floor for nominations. Um, does, do we have- Can I nominate a slate of candidates? I will accept a slate, yes, multiple. I would like to nominate Martha Keneally as chairman, Hannah Granfield as vice chair, and Amanda Drew as secretary. Okay, do we have a second? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like your enthusiasm. All right, are there any and other That was for Martha as chair, right? <laughs> of all three of you. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Uh, can we move to have the nominations closed? Anyone? Someone just say so moved. I move. Uh, so moved. <laughs> okay. And a second on the closing of the nominations. 
Second. Okay. All right. And then, uh, so we'll vote for the slate of officers as proposed by Lori. Uh, going around, um, I will start with Michelle. It help if I unmute. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Peter. Yes. Kristen. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Diane. Yes. Terry. Yes. And Hannah. Yes. Lori. Yes. Okay. Amanda. Yes. And I'll say yes too. All right. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Amanda and Hannah, very much for stepping up. I appreciate it. And I appreciate, we appreciate the vote of confidence and the enthusiasm. So, uh, and the library yeah. director thanks you all as well. Oh, well, we appreciate it. We always And the enthusiasm with, with it, which uh, Peter seconded. <laughs> Great second. It's like the best we've ever had. All right. We're moving on. We're going to go to our town council liaison. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Well, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, so, uh, looking forward to your update. How are things? Sure, yeah, we actually, um, Town Council had actually had a special meeting last night. Uh, we actually weren't supposed to meet, but uh, due to the kind of the urgency of some of the actions that were on our calendar, we came in. Uh, of note, um, we did vote on a, uh, a piece of the High, uh, High Crest School roof replacement. Uh, it's only one section of the school, of the school um, but uh, based upon, you know, we needed to vote on it last night in order to get it completed by the time kids go in next week. So they're uh, construction going too early next week. Um, also purchased three new police cruisers, which was in our 2021-2022 budget. And uh, a particular note uh, that we spent a lot of time talking about is the institution of a, uh, the mask mandate once again in our community. Um, this is based upon Connecticut Central Health District. Um, their uh, recommendation for all, for not only Westville, but all surrounding towns. And I'm sure many of you have read in the current uh, last day or two, you know, Rocky Hill, Glastonbury, East Hartford, Hartford, I mean, they're all slowly kind of coming on board. It's not an easy thing to do, but um, as uh, Charles Brown from the health district says, you know, you know, the, the, the data is there that says it works. It prevents this helps prevent the spread um, the, our numbers in Weathersfield, you know, the way that they, um, you know, they color code them. And we went from uh, a yellow skipped orange went all the way to a red this week. And, you know, that really kind of put everybody on their heels a little bit. So this extra level uh, level of protection, I think, will help uh, kind of our community along. And again, you couple that with urging as many of our friends and family to get vaccinated. And hopefully, we can kind of slowly move uh, move the ball forward here. Great. I know, so can um, I ask what the what the mask mandate is? I didn't I didn't read that yet that, that you guys put it on. Sure, it's, it's essentially just like in any public setting, whether you're going to a restaurant, retail, obviously, you know, the library or any public building. Uh, so if you're going inside, you, you must wear a mandate. It was actually supposed to go into effect um, Saturday the 21st, but I believe it's not going to go into effect until this Saturday to give, to give uh, the economic development folks and as many of the business community time to kind of you know, ramp up, get their signs up at the doors, and just so they can have as much compliance as possible. Any other questions? We have, I work in Hartford, that we have had it for a couple of weeks now, so. Um, all right, and I know Brooke is gonna touch on this further in terms of the, what's, what we're, how we're managing things at the library, so we'll just hold. Uh, wait for her update on that. Anyone else? Anything else for Kevin? All right. Thanks so much, Kevin. And thank, thank you, you for Kevin. sticking with us for that long finance meeting the other night. That was a marathon. <laughs> um, we're making this one a short one. So, um, okay. Just um, from my report, um, again, thank you very much to Hannah and Amanda for stepping up. i looking forward to uh, working with you both and um, and uh, I appreciate you both volunteering. And um, we also wanna 
extend a warm welcome to um, Diane McAdams and Kristen Michaels, who are our two new members. Um, we're so glad you've joined us. We appreciate you spending the time and volunteering. Um, it's a great board. We, we are sorry we're not able to meet you in person. Um, I know we've set up our orientation for, I think, next week, late next week. So um, we'll be able to do that in person. So I'm looking forward to meeting you personally then. But, um, you know, it's a, if you have any questions ahead of that, just don't hesitate to reach out to me. Brooke's always available and everybody on the board is always willing to talk. So we, we're glad to have you in the group. Um, just to note, look for as a group, um, it's time again to do Brooks evaluation. And so we're going to be sending that, I'll be sending that out. I'll either send it out or we'll, we'll set aside time at the September meeting to look at it together one more time to talk it through. Um, and, uh, and we'll probably, we will have a discussion certainly at the next meeting and then we'll have it be due for the following meeting after that. So we'll, or I'll ask you to get it done in that period of time. Um, and so look out for that. Um, and we're gonna talk about finance committee in a minute, um, but I do wanna just mention, we'd like to schedule um, a time for the outreach committee to meet. Um, as a lot of you, I know Hannah, ready? Um, and well, we need, we need to have outreach anyway, but um, one of the things we'd like to do and we wanna invite everyone on is as we, as a lot of you recall, um, last fall, was it in the fall we went on our walk? When did we do the walk? It was last fall. We had begun the discussion of um, creating a story walk. And a story walk is essentially where you have a trail, where um, signage on a trail um, that, where there are spots where a story is played out. It can be a poem, it can be a story, um, it can be whatever, you know, some piece of literature is and as literature. And as you walk along, you read each bit. Um, it's a great family thing. It's a great community thing. Um, and we have been looking at Wintergreen Woods as a potential spot to build a story walk. We've already toured, we toured a couple of spots and I think that was one of our, that was our favorite. So um, we'd like to propose that we go out again on, it was gonna be October 2nd, right Brooke? Saturday morning, October 2nd at 8.30 in the morning. So everyone get your coffee bright and early. Um, and uh, if you if you can't make that meeting, I, I mean, I'm always happy to take a walk over there. It's right near my house. So um, I do it another time, but let's, it, be, it would be fun to do it as a group and it would be a nice way for us to get together outside too. So hopefully everybody can make that. Um, but if not, we'll find an, another way to catch everyone up on that. So, um, and it'll be a chance to see the site, to hear more directly about what the story walk might look like. So mark your calendars and we'll send out reminders about that. Um, sorry, and could, could you just re repeat the date? I'm sorry. Octo October 2nd, 8.30 a.m. October 2nd, Saturday, October 2nd. And we'll meet right at the park or at the library? Yeah. So we'll meet, um, the parking lot is right down um, off of, uh, right behind the high school. Like if you drive along right behind the um, track at the high school, there's a little parking lot there. So we can meet there. We'll meet at the parking lot. Okay, 8.30? Yep, we'll meet at the parking lot at 8.30. So, and then um, just in terms of dates, our next meeting is September 28th. So mark your calendar for that. And so we'll have another reminder about the story walk by then. And we are gonna talk about, uh, we have the finance committee meeting coming up, but I'll mention that when we talk about finance. Okay, and that's it for me. Um, Brooke? Okay. You're up. Um, um, so the town's emergency operations center has recently reconvened the last few weeks. Um, this was due to the, the pandemic, but then we have extra ones because of hurricanes and such. Um, so we got lucky with the hurricane, uh, I think townwide and perhaps even statewide. Um, however, the heavy rain rains of recent, not just the hurricane, but prior have caused some leaks in the roof. Um, Sally Katz and physical services and Tremco um, have been quite responsive. So far, we are just been fairly fortunate. 
Um, but we do, as soon as there's a heavy rain, the next day we're coming in and checking our normal leak places. And what we're finding is that we need to go, we need to just almost walk all 30,000 square feet and see where there's new leaks. So it isn't just necessarily where they've repaired and we think, oh, did the repair hold? No, it's, it's new places. So um, we're having more and more staff involved in that process. Um, and so, you know, roofing in this town, it just, oh, they seem soft. <laughs> so, um, but we've been fortunate so far. Um, as far as the pandemic, um, which is the reason they have re really reconvened the EOC, um, because the library, we were strongly advised since the beginning of the pandemic that when we're reopening, reopen very, very slowly, because if you have to roll back, you don't want pushback, you don't want too much pushback. So we've been quite fortunate that um, the thing that has really been impacted is actually with the latest is masks for the last few weeks have been, are no longer optional for only those vaccinated. They are mandatory for everyone within town buildings. Um, and so we had 30 days of optional masking um, for the vaccinated. Um, social distancing has always been expected. It is six feet um, and is enforced if necessary. Um, the public have been extremely good sports about all of this. So we've, we haven't really had any issues with the public. Um, one of the parts where we are gonna have to roll back is that we are no longer doing any in-person meetings. We had scheduled the first in-person meeting for, to be for the end of September library board meeting that will be virtual um and so when we're also not going to be doing any in-person programming this plan we had planned to start that up in october so you know we hadn't really gotten to that point yet and so we're just putting the brakes on that for now um next week we will very likely remove some of the seating in, in anticipation of the beginning of the school year. Um, as many of you know, after school, in particular with the Silas Dean Middle School, the library can receive 50 to 75 seventh and eighth grade wonderful students of Silas Dean Middle School and Corpus um, come into our facility. Um, and we love them being here. Um, however, there is no programming, there is no seating, we're down to eight computers, which will probably have people already on them. And we, can, we believe the kids will be very fantastic with masking. We are very, very, very concerned that they will be completely incapable of social distancing within the facility. Um, and I did check with the EOC, with Charles Brown, and the Weathersville Public Schools. And the three feet, what I have been told last Thursday okay. in our meeting, is the three feet distancing they do in the schools is only in the classroom. They are expected, expected to social distance in the cafeteria, the hallways, the gym, as well as their own libraries. I don't know how realistic that is. I'm not in those buildings. <laughs> Um, but I just, I can't believe they're spending a whole day. They come outside and then they may be hanging out waiting for a ride. Um, and so there is limited after school activities at the school is my understanding. There will be some intramurals um, there, uh, but the dynamic of people hanging out and gathering at the library to wait for a ride really, really can't be the dynamic we have this fall. Um, and we hope to have some programming, but as you know, in, in regular circumstances, we'll have 20 kids in a program downstairs and I'll still have 30 upstairs on the computers, hanging out, just decompressing from their day. Um, and so I, we'll just see how it goes. And I think it's just a lot of very active engagement with the youth, um, at the beginning of the school year. Um, and I think it'll be pretty good at the beginning of the school year. It's when weather gets colder 
that that dynamic becomes more intense um and you know the kids are never in our care um and it's just you know we may have ho hopefully we won't have to ask them to leave if they're not social distancing but we'll see um me and uh dan mendez our uh library monitor had a very long meeting <laughs> the other day of how are the two of us approaching this as well as the rest of the staff and so we we've, we've already kind of you know discussed that um the team librarian and i are planning to attend uh, sarah briggs is our team librarian are planning to attend the back to school night but that's not till september i believe 23rd so that's kind of already three weeks into the school year um and i don't know if that's still going to be in person the situation at the school is kind of fluid so i'm not 100 percent sure um how that's going to go and if i'll get my three minutes to speak to the parents um but we're going to remain cautiously optimistic that this will all just work out um the option of closing down between the hours of two and four is on the table um but i really don't want to do that um and i'm i'm hoping with just a lot of engagement with the youth that we're able to set expectations and that they can abide by them um they were good between memorial day and the end of the school year they were good for two weeks very good um so that i'm banking on that a lot <laughs> so we'll see um but that's what we have uh, going on in october um we are still moving forward with reinstituting uh fine payments we are looking to still add sunday hours between one and five and our fast lane books are coming back um let's see what else we have going on um the friends uh buy a raffle ticket the friends of the library are holding a gift basket raffles starting after september 10th and it'll go through the beginning of december um they're five dollars and they'll be on display starting um like the second week of September. And you can come in and see and um, pick out a, a gift basket and put and buy a $5 raffle. Um, there will be no book sale this fall. Um, and as a result, since their donation closets are filled, uh, pretty much filled to capacity, um, we will still not be able to accept donations till after the first book sale that they hold, which will not be till the spring. Um, so we do still get phone calls of, are you accepting donations yet? And the answer is no, um, we're not accepting book donations. Uh, as far as uh, I, on the programming, we're wrapping up our summer reading um, coming up here. And the kids are rushing in for last minute summer reading that they're required to do for the school. Um, so we're seeing a lot of kids walking out with huge stacks of books that they have to read in the next two weeks or in the next week, week and two days. Um, in uh, upcoming programming on September 14th, we have uh, best-selling author Martha Hall Kelly doing a virtual program. Um, and uh, she wrote Lilac Girls, Sunflower Sisters, and something with roses, Lost Roses. Um, and so we're hoping for a good, uh, good turnout with that. That should be a, a very well-received program. And that'll be on Zoom um as far as it front um if any of you were interested uh we've moved to the cloud with our deep freeze uh software product um and that's a product that is installed on our public machines and after every use on the public machines uh the member of the public logs out and once they log out the computer shuts down wipes everything clean and so this is due to privacy, wipes everything clean and then relaunches. Um, so if somebody tried to save something to the hard drive, it's it's wiped out and it goes back to a, a, a base setting of some sort. Um, so we went to the cloud with that particular software um, and we're trying to do a repair of our um, self checks. I have three IT companies or different software vendors um, trying to troubleshoot our self checks, which are not accepting fine payments um, for very old fines. Um, they're not accepting them. And for some reason, we did a software upgrade and that doesn't seem to work, but they're working for checkout, which is good, um, but they're not able to do all of their functionality. And, and I've had three different software companies working on that with Celia for the past um, couple of weeks. So that's been an ongoing issue. 
Um, and that's what I have for the library director's report, Martha. Oh, that was good. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I know we have finance stuff to still talk about, but all right. Anyone have any questions for Brooke? Well, can you, just... can you send me the link to this meeting afterwards? After Don't write as fast as I thought that I did. Yes. <laughs> Wait, Amanda, are you taking notes? Yes. Yes. I, I am too, because I didn't know if it was your meeting or not. Oh, <laughs> you can take them. We can, we can, we can send them both to Brooke. It's a battle of the note better. takers. I think you should both submit your notes and then we'll, we should, we'll see. We should. Then she'll have a really good set. So maybe not as good as Peter's, but. <laughs> Um, that's so funny. All right. So, well, I just thank you, Brooke, very much. And, you know, um, I'll just, I mean, we miss our, we miss the public. We miss the kids. I know, you know, I know the library miss the library misses, I know the staff misses everyone and, and, uh, we'll, we appreciate the patience and understanding of the public as we continue to go through this together. And, uh, we will, there will be a time when we're all back and we'll have this in the rear room there. So anyway, all right. Thank you, Brooke. Um, so we're going to move on to our finance um, committee report. Um, Brooke, do you want to start with an update on, on the uh, financials or do you want me to go right ahead with Shulman? Why don't I do the financials first real quick? Okay. Um, so everyone was emailed uh, previously and today as well the um, chart, the two Charles Schwab accounts from July 31st, um, and that was done over in the finance committee meeting last week as well. Um, so you can see the balances there. Did anybody have any questions on the Charles Schwab accounts, the showman and the library account? And I'll just, as a little perspective, we're, we're gonna talk in more detail about the showman account, which is an endowment that we have, and then the, the other account is an accumulation of, of donations, money saved, a, a variety of sources that we've gathered over time, over many, many years that um, are, is for long-term projects and whatnot. So um, th those are those two, but we'll, we're gonna be talking more about Shulman in a moment. The other spreadsheet that I sent out is an update um, that I sent out of the current uh, operating budget of the library. Um, as of yesterday, we were 17% uh, spent out. Um, last week when I sent it, um, I, I leave to everybody, we were only 14% spent out. And so a payroll had hit and some bills had come in. And, and if you think of it this way, about every $20,000 or, or a little bit more than that, is 1%. Um, so we spent 3% in like just a handful of days. So um, we're right on track with spending basically uh, at this point. So, um, and a lot of money is um, outlaid in the beginning of the uh, fiscal year, especially for tech support um, items because a lot of our contracts are July 1st through June 30th. Um, so a lot of I'm signing a lot of things at in the, the last two weeks of the fiscal year and the first two weeks of the fiscal year. My hand hurts. Um, and so are there any questions about the current operating budget spreadsheet? Okay. And then the last thing I wanted to mention before Martha goes into the showman withdraw is the ARPA money did finally arrive. Um, and I've been working with finance of, um, and, and that's the America Rescue Plan Act. Uh, the library received 20,000, at least $731. Um, and that has limited use, um, but we're gonna be getting uh, two water bubblers, a charging station um, and some other items. So uh, as soon as we finish setting that up in codes um, with finance, and they've been helping with that process, we're gonna go shopping start spending this money down because it needs to be um, basically spent out by the end of February, really by the end of March. Um, and then I have to submit a report to the state library. Um, so it's federal money coming through the state um, to us. And so we've already received it and we're ready to, to head out and start shopping. So 
um, we are excited to be receiving those items. And that's what I kind of have for that. And then we'll talk about the show. Okay, great. Any questions on any of that? All right, so um, the Shulman account. So um, just to, again, providing background, Jane Shulman was a, um, a, a huge supporter of the library who passed away in 2010. Um, and in addition to having given so much time and energy to the library during her life, she, she left us her house, um, which we, we sold um, and um, realized a gain of $282,000. Um, that was put in an endowment, which is the one of the the um, the financial reports you saw was the the, um, the the money that we've realized plus you know the investments we've made over time. We have a, an entire investment strategy around Shulman, um, and when um, Ms. Shulman left the, the fund, she she dedicated them specifically. They are restricted specifically to be used for adult collection. And by um, in keeping with the, um, the, um, the, um, the bequest, we um, only spend what, the, what we can, um, the interest that we make on the account, we don't spend the principal of it. So um, this, is, this is something we've, we've uh, set up our investment portfolio around Shulman so that we can collect money off of it every year. Um, in going through, when we set the um, policy up around Shulman, it was decided we wanted to leave a little bit of a cushion because we never wanted to see us see the, the investment go underwater so that we couldn't take anything from it. Um, initially, we um, had set that number at $300,000. Um, just this past year, we actually received another $12,000 from the Shulman estate. Um, that was money that was kind of found through, I don't know, something through the family. And it came, to, it, they decided in keeping with her wishes that that would come to us. And so that kind of brought the base of the, 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 um, the invest, the, the principal up to about $295,000. Um, at it, in another meeting or so, maybe next, maybe in September, maybe in October, we're going to discuss some changes we're making to the endowment policy to reflect the fact that that, has, that additional money came in. But our job tonight is um, every year, we when we are above that $300,000 limit, we have the ability to draw money to support adult collection. Um, we had a good year. We first had a bad year um, and then it got better as, you know, like, a lot of investments, it got better. And so um, we always look at what the statement balance was on, on June 30th. And this year on June 30th, it was at about $344,000. Now take into account that we were, um, we were at, we were 12,000 12, of that represents the, the money that was added to the fund, but we had a good gain over last year. We usually, like I said, we, we keep it a little above 300,000. And so um, we had a profit of uh, over $30,000 this year. It was a good year. Um, to give you some perspective, I don't think we've ever taken more than $15,000 out of it in, in any year. And we've taken as little, not little, I mean, it's an incredible gift that she's given, but it's been as low as maybe eight or $9,000. And that's sort of um, what we want. We, 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 our goal, in terms of our investment is that we should be able to draw about $10,000 each year. We don't wanna have these big swings. It's great to have a year where it's very robust, but we wanna avoid years where there's nothing because from Brooks planning purposes, she wants to know that that's, that steady income every year that can support um, adult collections is important for our planning. Um, and so this year we have 30, we could take, we really could take 44, but we could take 30, about 30 if we didn't account, if we don't account for the 12,000. Um, but Brooke, you have asked that we, um, having looked at the needs and what we can do, you're asking that we would take about, we would take $20,000 this year. I don't know if you want to just speak to that. 
Yeah, that's correct. Um, and so this vote that you would make tonight, so my recommend, I have to look at the June 30th statement. We have to pick a point in time. So you already have the July 31st statement. I realized that. And then we even had more up-to-date numbers at the finance meeting that was around, there was a couple thousand dollars change from July 31st to August 12th or whatever, whenever our, our meeting was. Um, so I have to, we pick a snapshot in time and the snapshot in time, according to the policy is ju the June 30th statement. And so this vote tonight would be on what we would be withdrawing for, the, for, for to spend. Um, I would come to you later in the year and or sometimes during the same meeting and say, I would like to spend 10,000 of this on DVDs or 10,000 of this on, you know, whatever. And then you would vote on the expenditure. So this is tonight is just a, a vote on the withdrawal. Um, and then later on, I would come to you. I would, you know, I want to spend 5,000 for the Weathersfield History Room or something like that. So um, tonight is just the actual withdrawal so that we can pull the money out of the Charles Schwab accounts and realize the gain, basically, realize that income um, and, and give it and put it over to the town so that we can spend it from there. Um, and so my recommendation is, is 20,000 is, is, you know, kind of what my staff and I were hoping for. Um, and just as a note, it just so happened that Andrew Salek, our investment advisor, was at our last meeting last week, and we did discuss with him, um, you know, we tried to get him to look into a crystal ball and say, this is what's going to happen with your money if you leave it. We, of course, we want to protect it and want it to continue to grow. Um, he's, he's obviously not, he couldn't do that, um, but he did feel as if there, that, um, that, that, things are going to continue to grow and that if we left, you know, rather than trying to take all of the money at this point, it wouldn't be a bad idea to leave it and we can continue to see growth on that investment. And so he, um, he liked this path that we would leave some of the money, even though we could take more. So um, we did ask him specifically about that. And I'd just like to mention, uh, Jeff Kotkin is on our finance committee um, and he's a former town council member for, I don't know, 18 years or something, you know, and he rotated off that, but he, he's on the finance committee. Um, and so, and it, we're very grateful for his expertise that he provides to us. And um, he does remind us the money is there to be used, yeah. um, you know, so we're not trying to grow it indefinitely <laughs> it's there to be utilized for you know the residents of Weathersfield for the adult collection which can be very broad um and so you know you we want to use it and spend it for <laughs> for everyone so yeah definitely want to balance it go ahead Peter sorry yeah no I think it's very responsible because once I heard that we had almost 44,000 extra I'm like yeah baby let's spend it all so we're kind of some restraint <laughs> more than I do. So I'm quite impressed. And, um, uh, and Brooke, I know that you had mentioned, obviously it's for adult collection. I know that. Um, and you just said, for example, DVDs, is there something on the horizon that you're thinking about at all? Do you know, I'm just curious what you're, what, and it can change. I know that, but I'm just curious what your thoughts are. So um, interesting. You mentioned that. So if looking at our strategic plan, um, one of our strategic goals or strategic initiatives, whatever you want, however you want to phrase it, is celebrate diversity. And um, we at the Weathersfield Library have no materials to speak of um, in languages other than English. Wow. And it would be and that isn't to say there isn't like a bilingual children's book or that I, we, we subscribe to people magazine in Spanish. Okay. So like, but can I name anything else? Not really. I mean, so that's pushing it. Um, so it would be really wonderful <laughs> to have say a Spanish collection, a popular collection, what I would call a popular collection of um, materials in Spanish. 
I love that. Like, I like love that, that would be absolutely fabulous. And what was interesting today is um, my phone blew up. My, I'm on Weathersfield Libraries on Facebook. In order for me to get into it, I have to go in through my personal account. But my phone started, Facebook started blowing up. And of course, it wasn't sadly for me. It was for work, um, which was actually turned out to be wonderful. And someone, I'm using Google Translate to communicate with a woman whose first language is in English. I'm using Google in Spanish. And it was communicating and trying to get her um, hooked up with uh, the Weathersfield Public Schools. And I'm doing this like in Spanish. And I'm like, <laughs> we have no Spanish speaking staff at the Weathersfield Library. You know, um, and then I'm calling my connection who happens to live in, uh, who works in New York, head of children's. This woman had a five-year-old. She's trying to get enrolled in school. <laughs> and, and it was just like, oh my, but the fact that I could help her in real time was, was great. But I'm thinking if she were to walk in here and look for materials in her own language, not a thing. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. Um, do yes. we know what languages are spoken in Weatherfield? Yeah, so we um, Spanish, um, and then we have uh, Urdu, um, but that's uh, predominantly, I want to say Rocky Hill, um, Bosnian, Albanian. Um, yeah, so it's trying to do, the schools put out like a kind of a list every year, and then you're using the new census data that just came out, you know, looking at it from that perspective um but spanish for sure we absolutely sure. need and i did it today i'm like I, i'm on facebook messenger doing reference interview questions with a patron it was wonderful um and i felt i helped somebody and then i had to like okay stop leave it to my staff <laughs> so yeah um we i'm just gonna say so my kids went to charles right and we always said there were at least 30 plus languages spoken in that community just in the Charles Wright community. So I, I think we were at like 32 when a few years back, it probably has grown, so. And when we're looking at like space, uh, space is uh, like our large print is quite large. Um, and uh, because people can expand on their screen readers, the large print, which are quite expensive materials is less used than it was previously. Audiobooks. They're still utilized, but are you getting a car today with a CD player? You are not. Um, and so there's space, physical space opening up that we can plop entire bays worth of collection in. It's just a matter of finding the right vendor and hooking us up with, with the needs of the Weathersfield residents who would be interested in this type of material. So. But that is perhaps, Peter, what might be on the horizon. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Brooke, uh, Kim Bobbin speaks Spanish and she could also He's help. on vacation today. He is on vacation, but call her. <laughs> 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 um, tried to tap into that, I can assure you. <laughs> I know. Um, anyway, so uh, any, any other questions? It's a good, yes. and so, and to your point, it is good to know where, where we're heading. And um, it's like, it's such a valuable gift um, that we get every year from the Shulman, um, the, the, the Shulman Endowment. And uh, just, we did actually um, rename the community room, the Shulman, the Jane Shulman community room in her honor, uh, last, right before the pandemic. And then we shut it down and no one's been in it since, but <laughs> we're gonna have, we're gonna cut a ribbon on that when we come back, so. Um, okay, so so the so what Brooke would like is twenty thousand dollars withdrawn. So I would need a motion um, to withdraw twenty thousand dollars from the Shulman account based on the June thirtieth, twenty twenty one statement. I will move to um, withdraw twenty thousand as as Martha has stated from the Shulman account. Amanda, I'll text you that motion. A <laughs> second. Okay. All right. Um, oh, I'll just go around the horn. Um, Diane. In oh, favor. any further? Just no further discussion. I'm sorry. We're good. Okay. No. Diane. Yeah. I I'm in favor. Okay. Thanks, Terry. Yes. Uh, Kristen. Yes. Great. Michelle. Yes. Lori. 
Yes. Amanda. Yes. Uh, Hannah. Yes. And Peter. Yes. Great. And I'm a yes too. Good. All right. Thank you, Jane Shulman. And I just want to mention how the process is, is that no one can get to the Charles Schwab accounts unless there is, it has to be the signature of a letter and the minutes of the meeting. So while this is one of our shorter meetings, Amanda, it's the most important minutes that we have. Um, so no we pressure. Um, so we um, is I present the minutes and um, a town employee, which is either myself or Mike O'Neill, the director of finance for the town, and uh, a library board member like Martha. Um, it, it cannot be two library board members and it cannot be two employees. It has to be one and one. <laughs> Um, in order to just safeguards that we've kind of put in place. Um, and, uh, and then that's given to Andrew, including the minutes of the meeting um, and whatnot that this has happened. And so, um, and then I do send him a copy of the recording so that he can, Andrew can see everything. And then the money is raised and transferred over. Um, so we did put those in those kind of safeguards over, you know, I want to say in the last, since I've been here in the last seven years, um, just as a check um, for uh, the money, so. Right. Okay, and then the last thing um, on finance is we need to set up another meeting um, to talk about the adjustment to the endowment policy and a couple other items. Um, Brooke, did you, call, did you decide the dates we were looking at was September 15th, which is Wednesday, Thursday, the 16th, or Wednesday, September 22nd. I know you were gonna reach out to Jeff and see, do you wanna wait and send those out or? And so Jeff is available on all of those. Oh, okay. So we can decide now. Does anyone have, I, I was available for all of those. Does it, does, is there anyone who'd like to come that is not available the 15th, the 16th or the 22nd? Has a preference. Anyone? You wanna, what do we like better, Wednesdays or Thursdays? <laughs> I think, why don't we do it sooner than later in case That's something amazing. comes up? Um, shall we go with Wednesday then, September 15th? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. What time, seven? Uh, that's a six o'clock meeting six. usually. Okay. And that's it for finance. So that's confirming Wednesday, September 15th at six. Yes. Okay. Um, that's it. And anyone have anything else they before we uh, adjourn? Wow, that's fast. That was so, so fast. Yeah. Wow. Whole record. 51 minutes. Shortest meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make motion to adjourn, but it would speed up the meeting. No, okay. So uh, does someone want to make a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. Okay, adjourn. thanks, Hannah. Second? Second. And um, I'm going to vote yes, Amanda. Yes. Lori? Yes. Joe? So, yes. Kristen? Mm -hmm. You just give us a... Yes. <laughs> yes. Terry? Mm -hmm. Yes. Diane? Yes. Yana? Yep. And Peter? No. <laughs> Too bad you lost. <laughs> I'm not putting down yes. <laughs> you can stay. <laughs> All right, yes. All right. <laughs> Twisted your arm. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. That was good. All right. Great meeting.